In ancient Greek mythology, the underworld, often referred to as the realm of the dead, is a complex and multifaceted realm ruled by Hades. The underworld is where souls go after death and is divided into several regions, each with its own significance and purpose. These regions include the realms of Tartarus, the Asphodel Meadows, the Elysian Fields, and the Isles of the Blessed. Stick with us today as we explore what the ancient Greeks believed happened after a person died. We will be looking at each of the regions in detail and explain some of the types of people that you might find within each level. To begin, almost all people who began their journey in the underworld started with death. When an individual died, their soul would separate from their body, marking the beginning of their journey to the underworld. The circumstances of their death could also potentially influence their fate in the afterlife. The soul would first arrive at the banks of the River Styx, a boundary separating the world of the living from the underworld. Here, the soul would encounter Sharon, the ferryman, who would ferry the souls across the river. Payment, often a coin, typically an obol, placed in the mouth of the deceased on earth, was required for this passage as it was used in the underworld as payment for Charon's services. If a soul did not have a coin, they would be left to wander the banks of the Styx for a hundred years, unable to enter the underworld. The ferryman Charon is typically depicted as an elderly, grim figure with a dark hooded cloak or robe, and he is often carrying a lantern or a staff. He has a skeletal or corpse-like appearance, with a long, unkempt beard and sunken, hollow eyes. Charon symbolizes the transition from life to death and the crossing from one realm to another. He embodies the belief that death is a journey and a passage that one must undertake to reach the afterlife. As for some background on the ferryman, Sharon is a son of Nyx and Erebus, making him a primordial being associated with the darkness and shadows of the underworld. In some versions of myths, he is portrayed as a neutral figure, merely doing his duty as the ferryman, while in others, he is depicted as a harsh and stern individual. Sharon is a symbol of the inevitability and impartiality of death, emphasizing the ancient Greeks' understanding of the transition from life to the afterlife, and the concept of a fair payment for passage into the underworld. After Sharon had guided a soul across the river Styx, he would leave them to face judgment before the three judges of the underworld, Radamanthus, Iacus, and Minos. They would assess the soul's actions during their life and determine their fate in the afterlife. Based on their judgment, the soul would be placed into one of four locations within the underworld. Tartarus, Asphodel Meadows, Elysian Fields, or the Isles of the Blessed. Tartarus is the deepest and darkest part of the underworld, reserved for the worst and most heinous offenders. It's a pit-like abyss, often described as a place of torment and suffering. The Titans and other beings who opposed the Olympian gods were imprisoned here after their defeat in the Titanomachi. Notable individuals condemned to Tartarus include the Titans Cronus, Iapetus, and certain condemned souls. Their punishment involved being bound in chains and placed in the depths of Tartarus, where they suffered eternal torment. Let's take a look at some notable souls condemned to Tartarus. Sisyphus, a crafty and deceitful king, was condemned to Tartarus for his cunning and deceitful ways. His punishment involved pushing a massive boulder up a steep hill, only to have it roll back down just before reaching the top. He would then have to start the task again, repeating this cycle for eternity. Tantalus was sentenced to an eternal punishment in Tartarus. He stood in a pool of water beneath a fruit tree, but whenever he tried to drink the water or reach for the fruit, they would always elude his grasp. This symbolized eternal frustration and unfulfilled desires. This is also where the English word tantalize originates. Ixion was punished for attempting to seduce Hera. He was bound to a fiery wheel that constantly spun through the air. These three and many others met an unlucky fate filled with torment in the depths of the underworld. The next part of the underworld that we will discuss is the Asphodel Meadows which is a neutral and monotonous part of the realm where most souls go after death. It's neither a place of great reward nor intense punishment. The souls of the mundane, ordinary, or those who were morally neutral in their lives end up here. It is a plain covered in asphodel flowers, and the souls wander aimlessly, 
devoid of any particular joy or suffering. They are stripped of their earthly desires and memories, living a lackluster afterlife. Here are some of the types of souls that would spend their eternity in the Asphodel Meadows. The majority of ordinary individuals, who neither displayed great virtue nor committed heinous sins, were thought to end up in the Asphodel Meadows. These were people who lived average, unremarkable lives and were not particularly virtuous or evil. Soldiers who did not achieve heroic status or special favor from the gods were often believed to be sent to the Asphodel Meadows. Additionally, common folk, farmers, laborers, and those whose lives were centered around day-to-day -day work and survival were considered likely candidates for this realm. People whose deeds were not well documented, those without significant achievements or recognition, or those whose names and actions were lost to time might be sent to the meadows. Individuals who did not strongly align themselves with a particular deity or religious belief system, or those who had no strong convictions during their lives, were often thought to go to the Asphodel Meadows. The Elysian Fields, also known as Elysium, is a realm of the underworld reserved for the virtuous and heroic souls. Those who led righteous lives or performed heroic deeds during their time on Earth may be granted entrance into Elysium. It is a paradise and a place of eternal happiness, lush landscapes, and pleasant weather. The inhabitants engage in various enjoyable activities, feasts, and games. They retain their memories and enjoy a very pleasant afterlife. Some notable figures who were thought to spend their eternity in this realm are as follows. Heroes of mythology, such as Achilles, the famed Greek hero of the Trojan War and a central character in Homer's Iliad who was known for his bravery, strength and prowess in battle, was said to spend the afterlife in Elysium. Other demigods and heroes like Hercules, Perseus, Theseus and Jason, leader of the famous Argonauts, were also said to be in Elysium. The vinyl and highest realm of the underworld is known as the Isles of the Blessed. The Isles of the Blessed are a region within Elysium reserved for the exceptionally virtuous and those favored by the gods. It's a special and elevated section of Elysium, and only the most exceptional souls gain access here. Those who are deemed especially worthy by the gods, such as heroes and individuals who have received divine favor, find eternal bliss and happiness in the Isles of the Blessed. The environment is even more beautiful and luxurious than Elysium, and the inhabitants enjoy a heightened form of happiness and contentment. The realms of the afterlife, shaped by the beliefs of an ancient civilization, remind us of the complex interplay between life, death, and the human psyche. In understanding these myths, we gain insight into the human desire to comprehend what lies beyond mortality, a quest that transcends time and culture. May this journey inspire you to delve deeper into the realms of mythology, to question, to seek, and to appreciate the boundless human imagination. For even in the darkest depths of the underworld, there is a glimmer of hope, a spark of heroism, and a promise of eternal bliss. If you are interested in learning more on your own, I have linked the Amazon page to one of my favorite mythology summary books that I find myself going back to and reading often in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and feel free to leave a comment telling us what you might want to hear next. Thank you for watching.